Another studio album by Yes coming out. Let's review it right now. So welcome to the channel. I'm Dean Wolf. Uh, if you've not been here before, here's Prog Dog and Sharky. I am a producer, uh, multi-instrumentalist. Now, I've been a Yes fan for many years. I've enjoyed uh, even their modern day stuff. I liked, for example, The Ladder. That came out in 99. Magnification, 2001. Fly From Here, 2011. Heaven and Earth came out. I didn't even bother to check it because I was... Uh, I wasn't even really thinking a lot about Yes by that time, and I heard some reviews that was not great, so I didn't even check it out. By the way, I have checked it out finally last week, and I actually like it a lot. I'm going to do a review of it later. You can check that out. And the reasons why I like it, I'll tell you. That's a, It's a whole story there. Now, The Quest came along, which was another Yes album in 2021, and that was an interesting first single. It caught my ear, and the reviews were fairly positive for that album. The uh, artwork was absolutely astounding though i mean that was exceptional so i was tempted to buy the vinyl but i haven't yet we'll see when i do that um so it brings us to today 2023 the release of mirror to the stars it marks the first yes album uh well, studio album that came out now in uh gosh 50 years without an alan white i mean he's been playing for 50 years can you imagine that so due to his passing of course we've got a new drummer jay shellen i think is his name and he's great. No worries there. He's 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 a good drummer. No problems. Then of course Billy Sherwood is playing bass because Chris Squire now has been absent for two albums because of, he passed away, which is very sad. Well, the praises for this new album are pretty unanimous right across YouTube. I did a reaction to the first single, which really intrigued me. It's cut to the scars. Cut from the stars. There's a link now. As I dive into the full disc, the main question on my mind is. Will the rest of the album be as good? Will it be an upbeat affair? Because that first tune, Cut from the Stars, was really good. I liked it. It kind of surprised me. It was so good. Overall, it's a very new-sounding album to me from Yes. And as an, and what I mean by that is it's a dis distinct unfamiliarity to it, which is really neat. It's like, this is. it feels like Yes, but it's so unfamiliar. It's like, hmm, I'm going to have to listen to this several times just to grasp it all you know there's so much there there really is it's, uh, they've successfully carved out some new paths here to my delight it will be uh i think uh, a worthy album part of their discography i mean the yes album that always goes to the bottom is open your eyes right of course so that seems to be in the bottom of everyone's list well this one is going to definitely shoot up it's gone it's gone up higher than that much higher so does it match close to the edge? Well, what do you expect? Of course not. Uh, who, who would expect that anyways? It's unrealistic to expect that. So does the new album bring something distinct and fresh to the table? Absolutely. Is it super edgy? Well, no. I wouldn't say... Well, I wouldn't say it's not edgy. It is kind of edgy for yes. It's not too bad. Uh, as far as progressive music is concerned nowadays, you know, I mean, uh, a lot of the bands... Majority, I would say, of bands are um, more heavy metal. You know, but yes, it's still that kind of 70s rock-ishness. Uh, so what's different um, from this album, uh, from the rest of the discog discography? Of course, John Anderson vocal's not there. And John Davison is good. And he has a similar timbre to John Anderson. But he doesn't really belt it out the way John Anderson can. He doesn't seem to cap It doesn't seem to be natural to him to belt it out. He's a more softer, gentler singer. So, of course, many people won't consider this authentic yes. I would differ on that opinion, though, because I think, um, I don't know if it's Chris or Alan or whatever, they're saying they have their vision for the band for yes is that they're going to be together forever. In other words, um, once they leave the band, someone else come in. And before you know it, it'll all be new people, but it'll still be yes. We'll see if that's even possible legally. I don't know. But the incarnations of yes will hopefully go on for centuries. <laughs> And, uh, you know, it'll change and evolve, and that's cool. But it's sort of nice to have that original vision for Yes to be, you know, looking behind their eyes. And so John Davis has a great voice. It's gentler than, um, than John Anderson. Um, similar in timbre, which is a real consideration because, of course, they're playing a lot of the old tunes when they're touring live, and uh, they need to do that. They need to have that sound. A song like Luminosity on the new album is the vocals are quite appropriate synth works really great in that song too but on the song all connected for example um upon first listening to it i kind of thought oh he's not belting out the way i think john anderson would have in that song 
So you have to adjust. I won't touch on the lyrics too much. Um, I think they're fine. Uh, I'm just not a lyric head. Maybe there's other people who can make more comments to the lyrics, but I won't speak too much to the lyrics. Although, circles of time. I mean, even just that that line, that reprise. I'm caught in a circle of time. I really like that, uh, that whole song. Steve Howe's clang is beautiful acoustic guitar. It's so lovely. And there's ambience pedal steel that he plays as well, which is reminiscent of uh, the Relayer album and To Be Over. Nice pedal steel work. I actually think that song's going to get Yes attention outside of the Yes a yes camp. I think that's a really going to have a broader appeal that tune, you know. Someone in the band sounds really similar to Chris Squire, and I I I loved it, I have to admit. Even though I'm always saying, yeah, you know, it's, yes it's changing, you know, adapt, get used to it. Uh, at least they're still kind of continuing it on. Mirror to the Sky. Here we go. 13 a minute yes song. Deserves special attention, obviously. I mean, yes is that's a yes specialty, isn't it? I mean, it's solid uh generally in the yes tradition but it's a much softer edged affair. Uh, it doesn't have the intensity or bite of Gates of Delirium. Uh, it doesn't have the gravity of Awaken, but it's a gently inspiring piece incorporating symphonic strings uh, and parts. It keeps interesting throughout, a huge variety in dynamics. Steve Howe's solo work is uh, con consistently pleasurable to listen to, of course. The tune finishes on a really strong note. It's almost like, the song's over. <laughs> what a great ending to the song. Maybe they're going to do more. That that song, they pulled it off so well. So the new drummer, Jay Shellen, he's fantastic, I think. I, I'm really impressed. Uh, since the majority of the album is upbeat, you get to enjoy his work, except for Circles of Time, which, as I mentioned, is a quiet song at the end of the album. The production overall, great. Steve Howe is marked as the producer, and I think he did a fantastic job. I haven't heard a, a Yes album in recent days or recent years that sounds as well-produced as this album is. I do, however, it's my secret wish, uh, that they would bring back Eddie Offord. And not only bring back Eddie Offord, but set them up in an analog studio with two-inch tape, you know, just like classic Yes. I really think that when Yes went digital, it didn't really suit it so well. I feel the same way about Rick Wakeman. He went from analog synthesizer to the synthesis to the digital keyboards, and I've never really in enjoyed that as much as I enjoyed all his work with Mellotrons and all the old analog synthesizers. I just think Yes is really, at its roots, an analog band. So this album has plenty of lush sections, uh, some very elegant parts featuring symphonic musicians performing as uh, on magnification. If you're not familiar with that album, it's a really good album too. You should check it out. So the album is full of compositional surprises. You can't absorb it in one listen. No way. It's like uh, everything is unpredictable. It's newfangled. I mean, there's even a kind of a retro rock feel and living out their dream, which is has a, a sort of surf rock feel there. And uh, Steve Howe playing some playful leads. And, uh, it, you know, it feels like there's a real breath of innovation in the Yes camp. There's lots of harmonies in this album, too. That's another characteristic that makes Yes, Yes. Steve Howe's work on the album is great. I, uh, he sure loves his fuzzy guitar. He uses that tone a lot in this album, this fuzzy sliding guitar. It sounds like he's got a bottleneck, but I'm not sure if it's he, if he's using his tabletop guitar or if he's using a slide on his guitar. I'm not sure. Maybe some of you can fill me in. You know what, though? Personally, I've always wished that Steve Howe would don some modern guitar tones, some really metal tones. You know, get someone from Dream Theater to, to produce a Yes album. That would be an... Uh, we'd see some amazing results... Um, the guitar player from Dream Theater kind of coaching how on a kind of the kind of tones that he's playing. I really think that Yes would benefit uh, if Steve Howe would just, you know, just uh, get out of the comfort zone a bit there. But it doesn't seem to be in his DNA. Maybe it's never, never going to happen. So what triggered this band Yes's new greatness? Did Steve Howe have an epiphany? <laughs> Maybe you guys can fill me in. Did something magical happen to Steve Howe somewhere along the way? Because uh, he's not slowing down despite his advanced age, and he's prolific as ever. And uh, I know that's owing in part to his lifestyle. You know, he's not a uh, party hardy kind of guy. He's very much into his uh, vegetarianism and veganism stuff. And uh, I know that for a fact because I, I, I ran into him in, a, in New York State. I saw him uh, going back to the counter and probably asking for some op options, vegan or something. He was working with the 
lady there. Anyway, I got to shake his hand or bump his fist there. It was cool. I'm, I was excited to meet him. That was one of the highlights of my life. Anyways, so I do think that, you know, uh, you know, J.R.R. Token, you know, Lord, Lord, Lord of the Rings, he's always had this, he had this pipe, you know. I still can imagine, Steve, how, you know, nowadays he's looking so wise. And if he had a pipe, yeah, that'd be a perfect picture, you know. He could borrow a cape from Rick Wakeman and he would just look like the wizard, you know. The wise wizard. Anyway, so living out the dream, or their dream, uh, seemed a bit different to me on the first listen. I mean, I mean I'm air quoting that, you know, it seemed different. It took me some repeat listening and uh, to get to get to into it, to really dig into it. The bass has some cool things going on in there. It's a great solo, and uh, the conga work, the, the percussion, really nice touch. I really love some Latin percussion in songs. I think it's a nice touch. Overall, my expectations have been exceeded, though they weren't too high, I admit. Onward and upward, though. Again, to be clear, I'm not listening to the bonus tracks for this review. I haven't even heard them yet. Just the main work, I wanted to judge it based on its own merits. And so, what's the prog dog score? What is it, prog dog? Okay, so we're gonna unveil now. It's a very strong and full flavored 3.5 bones out of five bones. So three and a half bones out of five bones. And uh, I really think they've carved out a very respectable piece of work here. It's a unique album. It complements and enriches an already expansive catalog of music that is yes just might earn back some of those stray yes fans who well it did to me it sort of brought me back into the fold a bit you know it's going to garner some new respect and appreciation without a doubt so that's my review thanks for watching and uh like i say i'm going to review um some of the other recent albums that have come out like the quest i haven't really listened to the whole thing and especially heaven and earth i think it deserves more respect than it's been getting i really do and i'm going to explain why in my upcoming video so i hope you can check that out thanks for watching uh, this is dean wolf make sure you check out the prog dog blog that's progdog.ca where you can find this review that i'm talking to you about in written form okay spiraling out bye now